first unveiled by Steve Jobs in 2002 as the XServe G4. This rack-mounted server was strategically targeted to bolster Apple's already formidable position in the education sector. Apple's XServe line remained available from 2002 to 2011, spanning five distinct generations. The initial models kicked off at a competitive price point of under $3,000, while the ultimate iteration, introduced in 2009, started with a price as high as $6,200. Hello everyone, it's been a while, but I'm excited to be back on YouTube after nearly two and a half years. In today's video, we're diving into the world of the XServe's final iteration. We'll be taking on the challenge of upgrading its GPU to support metal, boosting the RAM to a whopping 64 gigabytes, and even attempting to install macOS Big Sur on this XServe, as Samuel L. Jackson's character famously warned in Jurassic Park, hold on to your butts. Actually, roll the clip. Hold on to your butts. This journey is going to be quite a roller coaster. We have a specific order in which we'll be performing these upgrades. Let's begin by upgrading the RAM. Once that's complete, we'll proceed with downloading and building the patcher necessary for the installation of macOS Big Sur. Next, we'll install macOS Big Sur on the XSUR and configure it as the primary boot drive. Following this, we'll remove the old GPU and finish by installing the metal capable GPU. This sequence is crucial to ensure a successful upgrade process. First thing we're going to do is install the RAM. I went with 64 gigabytes because I got a deal on it. After installing the RAM, we'll go ahead and move to build the open core patcher. We'll head on over to the open core patcher website, click get started. I'll put a link below then we'll want to click download and install the patcher then we'll want to go and click open core install we'll scroll down we'll click on the zip file there get that downloading once that's downloaded we'll open it then Apple will go through and make a security check. You're going to want to click open. And then we'll move on to creating the installer. Now that it's open, go ahead and select the second option, create installer. This will allow us to choose the operating system. We're going to go Mac OS Big Sur. That's going to take roughly 20 minutes to download. Once it's installed, it will ask you to type in your password. And then we are going to want to click yes to installing. And then we'll choose the flash drive that we have. It'll wipe it. It'll ask for the password again. And then it will go ahead. This process takes 30 to 40 minutes. I sped it up. Once this is done, you're going to want to click no. Then we'll go back to the menu and we'll select settings and we'll choose our model, which is the XServe 3 comma 1. We're going to want to make sure that we go over and make sure none of these non-metal configurations are checked. Then we want to go and make sure that NVIDIA injection is selected. And those are the only two changes that we want to make. 
Now we can select, build, and install OpenCore. We'll select our installation disk, the one that we installed Mac OS Big Sur on. Again, type in our password. And that one is a very short one. Then you just return the menu. Now, there's one more step before you can install that is specific to the XServe. I ran into this problem while trying to install Mac OS Big Sur on my computer. And what I found is in the troubleshooting on OpenCore's website, there's an issue that doesn't allow for graphics acceleration after you swap a metal GPU on the Mac Pro. Well, next serves very similar to a Mac Pro. And so what I did was I went here and removed the auto package assets from the library on the USB drive. And what you do is you click Command and Shift and period at the same time and it reveals hidden folders and then you just go in to library packages and delete auto packages once you're done with that then you are good to move to the xserve and boot to the drive and begin installing i have three hard drives installed in here so i'm going to leave one as el capitan as a backup in case this all goes bad and then I'm going to make one of them the drive for macOS Big Sur. To proceed with the macOS Big Sur installation, plug the USB drive you created into the USB port on the XServe, power the computer on, and hold down the option key while it boots up. And for those of you who have never heard an XServe powered on, get ready, because it's one of the loudest computers I've ever heard. I'm not sure if that was a computer or an F-35 preparing for takeoff. Either way, hope you enjoyed that. Once the boot menu shows up, select the icon that looks like the Open Core logo. After clicking that, you'll notice a, another menu come up that looks similar to when Mac OS is booting up. You'll know that you're in the patcher if you look down in the bottom right and you see a set of numbers, a build number. And from there, what you want to do is click Mac OS Big Sur, and that will put you into a normal installation setup. From here, we'll just want to treat it like a normal installation of the Mac operating system. First, we'll want to go into Disk Utility, and we're going to want to format a disk AFPS uh, because this was an El Capitan computer and we are now moving to a different file system so it needs to be formatted as AFPS first. After the disk is formatted, we can go ahead and close out of that and then we can proceed with the installation. We'll just click install Mac OS Big Sur and then follow the commands on the screen to get it started. Making sure that we select the drive that we just deleted and reformatted in AFPS. And then we will wait for it to install. It took about an hour and 20 minutes on my XR to complete this. You don't need to click on anything, it will automatically select the operating system to boot into. This process took about another hour to complete. Don't think it's broken or frozen, it's just a very time consuming process the first time it gets going.
Now, once it boots in for the first time, it's going to be extremely laggy and slow. This is because we still have the old GPU installed in the computer. So what we're gonna do from here is we're gonna hold the power button down and turn it off. And then we're going to install the metal GPU hardware and then we'll be able to boot it up and it will be using the metal enabled graphics card. Now we can open up the case, take the cover off. The first thing we're gonna do is unscrew the old GPU. So once inside, this is a view from the top. On the left hand side, that empty black spot is where the old GPU was. There's four screws. You just unscrew it and slide it out. It's kind of similar to a stick of RAM. And then on the right side, where the green GPU is, that's the GPU that I added. Barely fits, upside down, fan facing towards the logic board. Make sure to save your old GPU somewhere, just in case you ever need it. Gently reseed the GPU riser back into the Xserve, and then tighten two screws down on the back side of the computer. Once that's done, put it all back together. We should be able to boot it up again. Now that we have it booted back up, we can go ahead and verify that all of our upgrades were installed. Make sure that the metal GPU is what's powering the graphics. And verify that our RAM has been installed correctly and is fully functional. All right, now we can go ahead and do a comparison. So we started off with an Xserve Mac OS 10.11 El Capitan, four gigabytes DDR3, and an NVIDIA GeForce GT120 with 256 megabytes of VRAM. Now we can view them side by side here. We can see we now have the RAM upgraded to 64 gigabytes. And we are showing the NVIDIA GeForce GT730, two gigabytes of VRAM and full metal support. Now we can set up and run Geekbench 5 to see what our scores are. So our scores, uh, single core, 360, multi-core, 1202, which is not a surprise. We didn't change anything to do with the processor. I was going to do uh, an upgrade to the processor, but I couldn't find a deleted one. I only have a single processor Xserve. Now let's run a quick test on the GPU. All right, our metal score is 2027. Not phenomenal, but considering this is a GPU from 2014 with two gigabytes RAM, I think that's not a bad score. Plus we can smoothly run unsupported versions of Mac OS on this Xserve. We did accomplish what I set out to achieve, which was upgrade the RAM and install a metal capable GPU. Here are my final reflections on this upgrade. To begin with, let's examine the expenses associated with this upgrade. A few years ago, I purchased the Xserve for roughly $50, while the NVIDIA GeForce GT730 graphics card only set me back $20, and the RAM upgrade cost $60. In total, I've invested $130 into this computer. However, when considering its practicality in 2023, I must admit that I struggle to find a significant use for it. It has served as an enjoyable side project, but its utility largely ends there. Perhaps there could be more value in the dual processor model 
especially if one were to upgrade it with two six core X5690 processors. Nevertheless, the limitations imposed by its compact size will always pose challenges when searching for an adequate GPU. In conclusion, I believe that your resources might be better directed towards acquiring a 2012 Mac Pro 5,1. It's a far superior machine, lots of similarities, but the GPU upgrade ability is far superior. Thank you so much for joining me on this upgrade. I'm going to be posting videos every Wednesday, so make sure that you're subscribed, turn the notifications on, and I'll see you next video.